neostigmine, pyrostigmine, adrophonium, right? So gamma dex, L16, I've discussed with you. So the reversal agents basically which are used, I'm not going into details of sugama dex and L16, you people don't need to know that. Whatever we discuss is sufficient. Reversal agents are anticholinesterases. Anticholinesterase means they are acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Okay. They inhibit the acetylcholinesterase. So basically what was happening, acetylcholine was getting destroyed by acetylcholinesterase and going back to synaptic vesicle. So all these drugs that I'm discussing with you, they are cholinesterase inhibitor. So they prevent that, they stop this enzyme. So what are they doing? They increase acetylcholine everywhere in the body because the acetylcholine doesn't get destroyed. So these anticholinesterase are divide, divided basically into two types. Irreversible drugs like OP poisoning, melathion, pelathion, echothiophate are all irreversible. You people must have seen echothiophate in ophthal which is used. Right, melathion, pelathion, OP poisoning are all irre irreversible anticholinesterases. This you will have read in Pharmac in detail. I'm not discussing that. I'm discussing these drugs which are used in anesthesia. Right. So these are anticholinesterases which are acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. So what they are doing is basically increasing acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. They're not letting it go inside the synaptic vesicle. They increase acetylcholine everywhere. That's what they're doing. Right. They inhibit the cholinesterase enzyme or acetylcholinesterase enzyme. Okay. So right, reversible. So the reversible ones, irreversible is, I told you, melathion, pelathion, ecothiophate. Reversible, we have adrophonium, neostigmine, pyridostigmine. So out of this, adrophonium, neostigmine and pyridostigmine, all the three can be used for reversal. Huh? But the most common used for is neostigmine, right? There's another drug in this group called physostigmine, guys. There's another group called, other drug called physostigmine. But you will find that only adrophonium, neostigmine and pyridostigmine are used for reversal. Right. So adrophonium, if I have to discuss with you, it becomes a short acting. Neostigmine becomes intermediate acting and pyridostigmine becomes long acting. So adrophonium is short acting, neostigmine is intermediate acting, pyridostigmine is long acting. I prefer to use the intermediate acting neostigmine. That's the reason. It's the most common use. It is intermediate acting, neostigmine. Pyridostigmine becomes long acting, adrophonium becomes short acting. The fourth one in the group of reversible anticholinesterases is physostigmine. This is not used for reversal. Why? You people already know the answer. You've studied that in Pharmac. It's not used for reversal. Reason? It crosses the blood brain barrier. This is a separate question from Pharmac itself, right? It crosses the blood brain barrier not to be used. Okay? Not to be used. Neostigmine is the most common used, but trust me, if you want, you can use adrophonium, you can use pyridostigmine. Anyways, we don't prefer to use them. And physostigmine should not be used. It crosses the blood brain barrier. Right? So now, when I give neostigmine for reversal, I told you that acetylcholine was getting destroyed by cholinesterase enzyme or acetylcholinesterase enzyme going back to synaptic vesicles. Giving neostigmine, what happens when you give this neostigmine? It stops that cholinesterase enzyme and increases acetylcholine. So this increase in acetylcholine is everywhere, not just at the nicotinic receptors. This increase is also at the muscarinic receptors. It's also increasing at the muscarinic receptors, guys, not just nicotinic, even muscarinic receptors. So, problem. It starts in the patient and the patient starts to have muscarinic side effects. Right? Our patient starts to have muscarinic side effects. So what are these muscarinic side effects, guys? Muscarinic side effects. Because this acetylcholine increase that is taking place, right? This increase of acetylcholine is taking place not just at the nicotinic receptors. It's also taking place at the muscarinic receptors. Think about chemical bombing. Just think of what happens in chemical bombing and that exactly is what is seen with muscarinic. So in when you see of chemical bombs that you must have seen, which, have, which, you know, which a lot of countries are using or they have, so in chemical bombing, that's what happens. They throw serine bombs, which are sort of, you know, uh, muscarinic, which cause muscarinic side effects. It increases the secretions, frothing and sweating. Secretions everywhere in the body gets increased. These are muscarinic side effects. When you speak of heart rate and RS and CVS, so you get decrease in heart rate, which is bradycardia and bronchospasm. Remember B and B, bradycardia, bronchospasm, right? So it increases secretions everywhere. Then it causes bradycardia, bronchospasm it increases peristalsis and increases micturition, right? So this is what is seen, increase in secretions, bradycardia, bronchospasm, 
and increase peristalsis increase micturition this is exactly why patients die also there is so much bradycardia so much bronchospasm so many secretions coming out right and continuous peristalsis and micturition is taking place in the patient this can cause death of the patient also now i told you that is what takes place in chemical bombing let's talk about the patient who is under anesthesia so if i have given neostigmine for reversal what happens is this is going to cause increased secretions it causes bradycardia bronchospasm it increases the peristalsis causes micturition so what to do never give neostigmine alone combine neostigmine with glycopyrrolate or atropine what is what is atropine it's an anticholinergic these two drugs are anticholinergic if you give anticholinergic what happens anticholinergics will take care of the secretions they decrease it anticholinergic is atropine it increases the heart rate hypertropium uh, bronco sorry it is bronchodilator hypertropium and atropine anyways we know increases the heart rate so if you have given anticholinergic guys it just does the opposite things you give anticholinergic it does the same thing if you given atropine it decreases the secretions it increases the heart rate it's a bronchodilator and it decreases constipation if you know na sorry for diarrhea also you give it it decreases the motility so for diarrhea also atropine is given so it decreases all that right so opposite things take place if you give cholinergic anticholinergic like atropine so remember anticholinesterase or neostigmine is never given alone you always combine it with glycopyrrolate or atropine basically to decrease the muscarinic side effects never give neostigmine alone for reversal i am not saying neostigmine as a treatment of some other condition which is given in pharmac neostigmine as reversal of muscle block for that should be never given alone always combined with a anti cholinergic drug which can be glycopyrrolate or atropine clear which can be glycopyrrolate or atropine okay so never is given neostigmine alone always with neostigmine combined with anticholinergic glycopyrrolate or atropine last point here what are the things that might increase the duration of a non depolarizing drug you know or increase the non depolarizing you know uh, the effect so some antibiotics like aminoglycosides right then there is tetracycline polypeptides increase calcium right if you give inhalational anesthesia agents remember we have discussed in uh, sevoflurane maximum skeletal muscle relaxation so like if you give and same thing with halothane and all so if you give you inhalational anesthesia agents they also increase the effect of the non depolarizing because they themselves cause skeletal muscle relaxation so aminoglycosides tetracycline polypeptide calcium increase calcium in the patient inhalational anesthesia agents all these are going to have pronounced effect you get more effect of non depolarizing you are getting more effect of non depolarizing than otherwise so less doses have to be used even myasthenia gravis and i told you myasthenia gravis you have to use a low dose of atracurium okay so this was the complete discussion that we had right about non depolarizing depolarizing reversal agents okay neuromuscular monitor